Um, to kick off today's, um, today's session, I'd like to introduce Alison Chatres, First Assistant Secretary, Middle East and Africa Division, Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Hello, uh, and a warm greeting to all 2021 Africa Down Under participants. I'm Alison Chatres. Uh, I'm the Assistant Secretary of the Africa Branch here in the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade in Canberra. Of course, I wish I could uh, be there with you in Perth this year. Uh, unfortunately, that's not possible. Uh, I do remember fondly my time at ADU in 2018 and 2019 uh, and hoping next year that uh, we'll all be back, uh, back together in person for this very important conference. Uh, but I'm very pleased, of course, to be able to deliver uh, a video message uh, from the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade uh, here in Canberra in my current role. Uh, and I think, thank Paige Urch for this opportunity. As our Foreign Minister, uh, Senator the Honourable Maurice Payne uh, has already uh, remarked to, to conference participants, uh, the Australian mining sector uh, is a central element of Australia's trade and investment relationship with Africa. According to the Australia Africa Minerals and Energy Group, over 200 ASX listed companies have operations in some 30 African countries. Uh, ranging across, uh, of course, gold, graphite, mineral sands and more. AMEG estimates that one in 20 mining companies listed on the ASX has an investment in Africa. I believe it would be fair to say that the resilience and fortitude of the private sector across the globe has never been more important than it is right now. With the OECD's unequivocal conclusion that the COVID-19 pandemic has triggered the deepest economic recession in nearly a century. We need to not only protect existing trade and investment relationships, but also to strengthen them. As countries deal with the gravity of the COVID-19 pandemic and seek to recover from the economic downturn, including in Africa, they need a private sector that is vibrant, determined and resilient. They need the determination and calibre of Australian companies. As many of you know very well, the trade and investment environment in Africa is diverse. It is not appropriate to view Africa through one lens. That does a disservice to the diversity of the landscape and people of the amazing continent. But of course, investing in Africa is not without its challenges. In recent months, we have seen heightened instability in different parts of the continent. Australia is gravely concerned by the prolonged hostilities in Tigray, Ethiopia, the spread of conflict into neighbouring regions, and what this means for the stability of Ethiopia. The insurgency in northern Mozambique is impacting the lives of people in that region and affecting business operations. In West Africa, ongoing threats associated with terrorism, especially in the Sahel, and the shifts in the political landscape in Mali, for example, also present challenges for your industry. And of course, these issues are exacerbated by a further wave of COVID-19 affecting many parts of Africa, and which is contributing to an uncertain operating environment. However, it's also important to acknowledge the very important progress made, including over the past 12 months, in the trade and investment climate in Africa, and including in the minerals and energy sector. In Tanzania, where there are significant mining interests, we see positive developments under the direction of the president. We have seen the election of a new president in Zambia earlier this month on a promise of reform. We are following the development of a new mining code in Morocco with strong interest and the establishment of Ghana's Integrated Aluminium Development Corporation. While the African continental free trade area is in its early days, it has great potential to reduce trade barriers and harmonise trade links across Africa. As a number of Australian companies can attest, legislation and regulatory frameworks, particularly for the mining sector, can change relatively quickly and dramatically in some contexts. Investing the time to engage with relevant mining authorities, local chambers of mining, chambers of commerce, tapping into other companies' expertise and experiences, and reaching into DFAT, our Australian diplomatic network in Africa, 
and the African Diplomatic Network in Canberra and with representation in some uh, parts uh, across Australia, is time well spent. Like you, we watch closely the various dynamics at play in Africa and we draw on our diplomatic network to help us understand what's going on. We nurture and value our relationships with African counterparts and communities. Our nine High Commissioners and Ambassadors and their teams in Africa are on the ground to support you and your, your interactions with government. They are experienced, knowledgeable and committed to advancing Australia's interests and can provide invaluable insights into local environments. I know many of you have already done so, but I encourage you to reach out to them and with those of us here in Canberra. We welcome discussions with existing companies and with those who are exploring new investments in Africa. As our many mining extractives and METS companies, along with those engaging in the renewable energy, agriculture, technology and services sectors can attest, Africa offers significant and diverse investment opportunities. We appreciate the contribution Australian companies in Africa are making to economic growth in partner countries but also to communities directly through the generation of jobs, skills development and training. Australia has world-class companies that are offer deep expertise in mining and extractives technology, safety and environmental safeguards. We appreciate the work of our companies uh, promoting values important to Australia, including good governance, transparency and human rights. And we applaud efforts towards gender equality and the empowerment of women in the mining sector and in communities more widely. So thank you again for the opportunity uh, to be part of, of this year's conference. Uh, we look forward to continue our close engagement as we work together um, to advance the interests of Australia and Africa through mutual prosperity. Thank you.